Welcome to Breakthrough Worship. I'm here in our garden at, uh, at Burnside City United Church. And uh, we're going to be telling this story about Jesus appearing at a garden. Uh, he, was, he was dead just a couple of days ago, but he's alive again. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Isn't that so exciting? I've got a couple of great things to say to you this morning. If you're a young person and you're wondering what to do these school holidays, this first week on Tuesday and Thursday, we've actually got a camp happening. We're partnering with Westmore Park Uniting Church. Ashley Littlefoot, our new youth pastor, she'll be uh, preaching there and talking at it. Uh, so if you want to get, get involved in that, please check out our website and our email for those details. I'm going to do a Sunday shout out, an Easter Sunday shout out to all those people that are watching these videos, these uh, YouTube videos, our worship services, worshiping together, sitting in their lounge rooms maybe right now and watching this t together on a Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, or maybe even a little bit later, who have never really engaged with Burnside City before. And I know that there are many of you out there, and that's really exciting to see. It's great to see. So Sunday shout out to all of you people. Uh, another thing that I need to say is that we have our thought for the week, and this one for Easter comes from friends of mine, Dean and Barb uh, from Port Lincoln, uh, sent me this book, and this, it has this in there. The pyramids of Egypt are famous because they contain the mummified bodies of ancient Egyptian kings. Westminster, Westminster Abbey is noted because of, within its walls there are contained the remains of many nobles and notables. Muhammad's tomb is visited because of the stone coffin and the bones that are there. Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. is revered because it is a resting place for many outstanding Americans. But the garden tomb of Jesus is famous because it is empty. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed.
morning friends and what a wonderful day it is Easter Sunday it's such a great celebration where we celebrate that Jesus is risen but that first Sunday wasn't really such a special day for everyone who was there at Jesus's crucifixion it was a tough time for them the disciples they were in a room they were scared they were really scared they had lost their friend and then there were three women and these three women they decided that they were going to look after Jesus' body and walk to the tomb. And they, uh, they were really, had lost everything. They'd lost their king, they'd lost their messiah, they had lost their friend, and a person who they dearly loved. And for them, this was a really, really tough day. But nevertheless, they still proceeded to the tomb. And so as they were walking along, they paused and they said, wow, a really heavy stone has been placed in front of the tomb, we know this. How are we going to break that stone? How are we going to move it? How can we get to Jesus' body? They were sad, they were desperate. They just had to try anything, so they kept walking. And as they arrived at the tomb, they, uh, they stopped and saw something they were not expecting to see. There was no stone. The stone had gone, the stone had been broken. And this was unbelievable for them. But what was going to happen next was even more unbelievable. And so they looked inside the tomb and to their despair, what they saw was an empty tomb. This was not what they were expecting. There were some of Jesus' clothes left behind which they recognised and they were really, really sad. But then what happened next was amazing. They walked out the side of the tomb and there was this brilliant white light and there was an angel, and the angel was in his full glory. And he said, don't be afraid. This is exactly what was planned. And that angel was very happy because that angel had witnessed the most unbelievable event in all of history. He had witnessed the risen Jesus. And the angel told them, I've seen the risen Jesus. Today is a great day. And for you... You may be really excited like I am for Easter Sunday because he has risen. But maybe today for you, you're sad because you've lost a loved one. Perhaps recently, perhaps a long time ago. And Easter brings back those wonderful memories when you're with that person. Perhaps today, today you're feeling anxious, just like the disciples were in the room. Perhaps today you're not sure where Jesus is. Can I pray for you now? Father, this morning I want to pray for the people who are grieving. Please keep and carry these precious people in their sadness and their loss. Cover them with your great wings of love. Give them their weary hearts rest and their minds sound sleep. Lord, lift their eyes so they may catch a glimpse of eternity and be comforted by the promise of heaven. And Lord Jesus, this morning I pray for those who are anxious. Perhaps it's work, perhaps it's parenting or financial, perhaps it's the virus. I just pray that uh, you'll relieve that stress, Lord, that you can give calmness and people can turn their apprehension away from this world and towards you. Because, Lord, I just pray that you'll bring peace at this time. And this morning I pray for those who feel distant from you, Lord Jesus. Perhaps it's like the disciples who sat in the room wondering, will they ever see you again? I just pray that your Holy Spirit will come now and touch these people and fold them so they may know that you are so ever near. Give them hope, Lord, and this Easter may they see you in a new light, in a new way, so that Easter may be special for them again. God of mystery and power, your love fills us with expectation. Darkness will never overcome the light you shine in Christ Jesus. We are so grateful for the hope that we have in your resurrecting power, embracing us this day. So may we live our love for you gladly, today and every day, as we sing with Easter joy, our hearts full of praise.
from John 20 verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, They had taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they had put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They had taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me, where have you put him? And I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending into the to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. St John Chrysostom, who died in 407 AD, was the Archbishop of Constantinople. He was one of the early church fathers, a very important early church father, known for his preaching and known for his public speaking. He was among the most prolific authors in the early Christian church. This sermon which I'm about to read to you was one that Chrysostom wrote himself and it's been preached in the Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic churches Easter morning. It's been read aloud and we're going to hear it this morning on this joyful Easter day. If anyone is a devout lover of God, let them enjoy this beautiful and radiant festival. If anyone is a grateful servant of God, let them rejoicing enter into the joy of their Lord. If anyone has loved and served God with all their lives, or if they have only recently come into relationship with him, let them rejoice that the master is gracious and receives the late comer in the same way he receives those who come to him early. He gives graciously and generously to all. Enter all of you, therefore, into the joy of your Lord, and whether you are first or last, receive your reward. O rich and poor, one with another, dance for joy. O you who are conscientious and you who are careless, celebrate the day. You that have fasted and you that have not, rejoice today. The table is richly laden. Feast royally, all of you. Let all partake of the feast of faith. Let all receive the riches of God's goodness. Let no one grieve at their poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn that they have fallen short again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the Saviour's death has set us free. He who endured death has annihilated it. He descended into hell and took hell captive. He put hell in turmoil when it received his body. It was in turmoil, for it was abolished. 
It was in turmoil, for it was denied its victim. Hell was in turmoil, for it was destroyed for those who are in Christ. It was in turmoil, for it was annihilated. It was in turmoil, for it is now made captive. The victory that Satan thought he had won is now snatched from him. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are overthrown. Christ is risen, and the demons have fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. And now Christ, being raised from the dead, has become the first fruits of them that have died in him. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Today for our prayers in the world, come and take a walk through my garden with me. Christ is risen. Thank you, Father, for the victory and power in your name, that by your might Jesus was raised to life paving the way for our new life with you. By this you bless us. Thank you for the beauty that surrounds us. Help us not to miss even small glimpses of beauty and kindness in your people. Thank you that compassion still abounds and that you work through us to support one another. By this you bless us. And we remember our church family. We pray for those in aged care May they be surrounded by kindness and God's comfort. We pray for all who are home alone. May God protect them and fill their homes with his presence. We pray for all who are home with school children. May God give them wisdom and patience. And we pray for our church leaders. May God infuse them with creativity and responsiveness as they continue our worship, witness and service, offering Christ's life-giving love and presence to all. Strengthen and sustain us all to be shaped by your abundant grace, bearers of your generosity and overflowing love. Shine your light in us, through us and over us. Set your way before us, so we may reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. On this resurrection day and forever, thanks be to God for your many gifts and blessings. Amen.
Have you ever been so certain of something, some outcome, that you don't even think that anything else would be possible? Well, it's really part of us being human, despite the fact we have limited experience of things, uh, we judge things fairly strictly sometimes. Uh, I've shown pictures previously of, of Kangaroo Island re regeneration after the bushfire and uh, this is a, a picture of a tree that was burnt beyond recognition but was still standing, considered dangerous, so they chopped it down and that should have been the end of it. But look, it started to sprout again. And it's not just one tree, it's a whole forest that's doing that despite expectations only a few weeks later. When I uh, lived in Baltimore uh, back in 1983, one night I went to the baseball and it began to rain. And uh, they had a rule that if it kept raining beyond about 9.30 at night, uh, then the game was abandoned. Well, when we were all wet and cold and we couldn't go home early because they used to park the cars in the car park nose to tail so everyone had to leave at once, uh, it stopped raining at 9.25. And so they decided to start the game, but they had a special celebration of Brooks Robinson's um, entry into the Hall of Fame, and that went for a while, so they didn't get round to starting the game till 10pm at night. And the Orioles played absolutely dreadfully against the Chicago White Sox, and it was just a miserable night. So after one o'clock in, in the morning, it got to the last innings and the Orioles were down 4-2 and they were certain to lose. And they only had, you know, three more batters to get out and we could all go home and get warm. The outcome was beyond doubt. Well, the batsmen came out one at a time and in a series of base hits, they hit run after run until they won the game 5-4 and the crowd who were very quiet suddenly erupted and celebrated and probably celebrated all the way home cold and wet as they were. Mary when she went to the tomb went early on Easter morning it was still dark and it's very interesting with John that John's gospel starts in the darkness of creation so that he can talk about Christ as the light coming into the world. Well, Mary, uh, in telling the story of Easter, he starts Mary in the dark uh, for, to, to mirror the same sort of pattern. And so Mary goes to the tomb and to her horror she finds it's empty. She goes and finds two of the disciples, Peter and the unknown disciple that Jesus loved. And they come to the, the tomb and they discover there's uh, nobody there. Uh, but in fact, we don't really know what they made of this because all it says is they went home. It's not that they celebrated, so they may well have believed the body was stolen as well. So Mary goes off uh, to find the gardener to ask where uh, the body has gone. And she doesn't recognise the gardener as Jesus. And he said to her, you know, who do you seek? You know, what do you want? Now, interestingly enough, again, the first words that Jesus speaks in John's gospel is to the disciples of John the Baptist. And he asks the same question, what do you want? Who do you seek? And, and, and part of revealing uh, who he is. And as soon as he says Mary's name, she realises who she's talking to. And she leaves the garden in absolute celebration. And he goes and tells her, go and tell everyone, go and tell my brothers. It's the first time that he's really referred to the disciples this way. And so we have this totally unexpected event that Jesus as a man has defeated death, uh, something that all people fear. But it's more than that. Jesus was both fully human and fully divine as we see exemplified on the cross when he was in agony and yet was forgiving the people that were causing uh, all his pain. Calling them brothers is very significant because the full potential of the human kind is to sit 
with Christ as co-creators at the right hand of God. That's about eternal life. So many will use the Easter story as this remarkable resurrection story as, as, as applying to today when we're in the darkness of a pandemic and yet we're expected to come out of it eventually if we keep our faith and we keep our hope. But in fact, this story goes far beyond that. It gives us the continued hope for eternal life. Easter Sunday service, although it's been great and our, you know, there's lots of great things that are going on, there's some things about it that I'm just not enjoying. Uh, it's not right. It, it should be different. We, we should be all in this church together, shouldn't we? We should be celebrating the, 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ with joy and with, with uh, being able to see the person next to us, see the, the hope that they have in their eyes, the, the, the fact that they really do believe that Jesus Christ is born, that, that he, he died and that he rose again. We should be singing hallelujahs from the top of our lungs so that those who are terrible at singing get drowned out by those who are great at singing. The great choir is singing. What's the song that we love to sing at Easter? Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. The organ should be beefing it out. The choir should be singing loud. The band should be making a grand, joyful noise for all to hear. But here we are. In an empty church, you're watching it from a screen at home. We've got empty chairs. It's an empty tomb. And we ask ourselves, where have you placed the body of Jesus Christ? Where is it? Where's it gone? It's not here. It should be here. And maybe for the first time, I... I start to understand what happened to Mary by that time a little bit more than I did before. Mary, the one who goes to the tomb and sees that it's empty and says, where is my Lord? He should be here. Where is the body of Jesus Christ? But then maybe, maybe just, maybe that Jesus is saying the same thing to us this Easter than he said to Mary back then. And we're not recognizing Christ in the same way as we did before. Jesus is right here with us in the room as you're watching this screen. And he's saying your name, Mary, Benji, Ian, Margaret, and about 20 people say, yes, that's me. He's saying your name right now. He's with you. The resurrected Lord is with us. And remember what happens next? Well, Mary wants to grab hold of Jesus, and I understand that. I want to grab hold of the body and say, just stay and let's just enjoy this moment, enjoy the joy of being together. But Jesus says, you can't hold on to me. Now, in some ways, what he's saying there in John's Gospel is, I'm a physical body, I'm not a spirit, I'm not just some kind of ghost wandering around with weird clothes on. But I'm actually physical right here with you. Reborn. A new birth. And, and uh, you can't hold on to me anymore. Uh, but then it also says that uh, my father is your father. My God is your God. Did you notice that in the reading? My God is your God. My father is your, your father. This is the first time in John's gospel that that's... That's been said by Jesus. All the, all the other times Jesus referred to, my Father, my God. Something's changed. The death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of our Lord. Because of that, our God is, is Jesus' God. Our Father is Jesus' Father. There's now a beautiful, rich relationship that's formed, that's new. Jesus is with us right now in a different way. We are still the body of Christ in a different way. Hear the words of Jesus saying to you your name right now. And saying, my father is your father. And then with this newfound joy that Jesus brings, the resurrected Christ, can we go out into the world just like Mary did? Shout to our neighbours, to our friends, to those that we're going to be meeting today, maybe online or Skype or on uh, Zoom, whatever it is, our families, and say, Jesus, the Lord is risen today. Amen.
So here we are at the empty tomb, and the tomb will always remain empty. The veil of darkness has been transformed into the brightest light. The most dreadful end became the most beautiful beginning. The depths of despair faded to reveal hope everlasting. The curse of death has been defeated by eternal life. May the celebration of resurrected life bring new hope to your being. May the victory of earthly death turn your eyes to the promises of heaven. May the empty tomb help you to leave your sorrows at the foot of the cross. So that God's hope, promises and forgiveness reign in your life forever. Amen.